November 2023 meeting, Fed left rates unchanged. Power said that probably this is the end of the tightening cycle and the traders are betting that Fed will no longer be hiking rate again. Well, then you ask one question. If Fed is no longer hiking or going to pause rate hike or potentially going to cut rate this round, then which will be the sector that is going to benefit most? Then we have to go back to ask ourselves, which was the sector that was affected most with a rising aggressive rate hike. Yes, you're right. And that's the SG REITs. That's Singapore Real Estate Investment Trust. Now today, I'm going to take a look at the REITs index. That means not individual REITs, but this particular index, which you need to know when you are investing in REITs in general. And one line, one line, one indication that you must track in order to help you for your REITs investment. And before that, remember to click this telegram because with this telegram, I will be updating what I'm looking at at the first instant and hit the subscribe button too. The one index that I recommend that you should be looking at to track if you are investing in, uh, for example, Asia REITs, especially Singapore REITs, is the FTSE, EPRNA REITs Asia, X Japan REITs Index. But the reason for looking at these REITs is because it gives a very good representation of the performance of Asia Pacific REITs, especially the performance of Singapore REITs. Now, why is this so? Because the top 10 constituents are mostly Singapore REITs. For example, Link REITs being listed in Hong Kong, and then we have Embassy of Office park REITs in India, but the rest of the REITs they're all Singapore based, and this account for about forty nine percent of the total weightage. In terms of the property sector breakdown, uh, the majority are diversified. Now the reason of why I want to take a look at REITs is because of the dividend yields. For example, back during twenty eighteen to twenty twenty, we saw that a lot of REITs went up because of the low interest rate, and the dividend yield of some of the very good REITs, uh, they are about three to four percent. Is really not that attractive at that moment. But as the interest rate starts to rise and we start to see that the REITs prices are dropping, the dividend yield of, for example, the uh, uh, index 10% cap USD is about 6.9%. And while the FTSE EPRA now REITs Asia, uh, average uh, dividend yield is about 5.6%. So that's to me a very attractive uh, yield right now, considering if you compare that to Singapore TBU and Singapore uh, saving bonds, then the dividend yield is higher. But most important, the reason why I want to take a look at REITs today is because of one line, which is the US 10-year U. Let's talk about why REITs tend to fall when interest rate rises. Number one, higher borrowing costs. REITs often use debt to finance their acquisition operations. So when interest rate rise, the cost of borrowing increases, which can eat into REITs profit and make them less attractive to investors. Number two, reduce dividend appeal. REITs are known for their high dividend yield, which are a major attraction for income-seeking investors. However, when interest rate rises, then investors can earn more attractive use on other fixed income investments such as bonds, making REITs less appealing. Third, lower property valuations. Rising interest rates can also lead to lower property valuations. This is because higher interest rates make it more expensive to finance the purchase of the properties than it can put a downward pressure on property prices. I have here on my chart, which is the FTSE EPRNR REITs Asia X uh, Japan REITs, a 10% cap uh, in SGD index. All right, so this is denominated in SGD. The code is EPAXJRSN. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay it with the US 10-year uh, government bond you under the new pane here. So this is it. Let's take a look at the relationship just to highlight a few relationship here. For example, we saw that there was aggressive rate hike during the 2022, right? And uh, during the 2022, uh, because when the U went up above the 3.2%, which was one of the historical high, then you start to track that the uh, FTSE index, which is the NARITS index, right, starts to really had a huge drop. The market isn't too convinced that the rates is going to have aggressive high rise. So it's for, for a while between 2021 to 2022, early 22, right, the REITs has been consolidating in terms of prices in the range bound situation. But once that the rates went up to above 3.2, we start to see that this index starts to tumble and head into a downward movement. So this proves that there is a direct relationship on uh, between the US 10-year U and the REITs. And as well as uh, I want to point out is that whenever the 
US 10 year yield hits a low range. That means at the low of the range, we see that the REITs is actually at the high point. Now, why is that so? Because the market is anticipation for another one more rate hike. So when the rate went to the low side, the market is anticipation for a rate hike, then they went in to go and sell the REITs. From here, then is a very clear relationship, inverse relationship. Whenever the US 10 year yield is high, the REITs will be at the low. Or when the 10 year yield is low, the REITs will be at the high because the market is getting getting ready to sell the REITs in anticipation of another rate hike. Now coming to this stage here, then where is the 10-year yield? So 10-year yield near 5% and that's really gave a scare to the market. But what I want to bring out in terms of this relationship is that potentially based on technical, we might be able to see a reversal in the 10-year yield. Now why do I say so here? Now because if you track the recent behavior of the US 10-year yield, it has been actually moving up in a higher high so we have the higher low here and a higher low and then this would be the higher high higher high and a higher high right and this one would be the key higher low okay and recently we've seen that power gave a like a hint that it is not going to high rate and we've seen the other central banks like for example ecb and uh, boe all pausing rate but what happened to the us 10 year U is that it make a lower low okay that means in comparison to the previous low this time round it made a lower low so this is a very very important technical movement or rather indication that potentially the us 10 year U is going to head down Okay, so this would be my first reason why we need to take a look at the REITs right now. Now, second reason, of course, has to do with the technique that I'm using. You know that I'm actually using Wash and Reins. If you would like to know what is Wash and Reins, remember to watch this tutorial on Wash and Reins, right? Now, what is happening into the weekly chart of US 10-year U is that priced as of last week, when above what we call a wash line so this is almost like uh, for quite some time the first time that we've seen that price moved above the weekly wash line although i think that um, perhaps we are not going to see the reads going up in a very a fast manner as what we've seen in the 2018 but this could be the telltale sign of a first reversal that we're going to see now of course that what i needed to know more is that i needed to know that monthly wash and means that means at the month level there is going to generate a bullish signal which i'm monitoring right now if i'm going to see that i will let you know in my video REITs form a large part of my passive recurring income and am I affected by the performance of REITs recently? Yes, I am. But I'm lucky because I built the REITs portfolio during 2016 and 2017 and I bought most of my REITs at the low price. And that's because I've tracked the uh, interest rate and the performance of REITs and I hope that you can do that with whatever I'm sharing here. I will be updating on whether we're going to see a monthly bullish signal on the uh, NAR REITs index. All right. Thanks for watching my video.